There are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I saw a very powerful vision this morning. Just woke up from sleep, minding my business. I wasn't even praying, wasn't doing anything. And all of a sudden, I didn't even know I was in a vision. I stepped into a very magnificent auditorium. Very, listen, magnificent auditorium. And when I entered that auditorium, it was like I was outside and I was inside at the same time. And it was like the Lord was causing me to pass through. And I saw many faces here that I know. But the thing was not the auditorium. The entire, the garments that people were wearing was pure gold. Pure gold. Crystal gold. Listen. I was amazed because it's not just the kind of gold that you see. Pure gold. I saw people that I knew in the physical were even struggling. In my mind, I said, what are these people doing with gold? Pure gold. Nobody was even concerned about the gold. People were just worshipping God. Some were lying down. But I saw pure gold. Listen, immediately I saw that. Then when I returned from that vision, I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? You see, let me tell you. Gold in scripture is associated with glory and royalty and wealth. When God begins to speak like this, it is his revelation about your destiny and what he's determined to do. Now, there is no guarantee that because it was seen, you will get there. Are we together now? Honestly speaking, it was only when I came back to myself that I believed it was a vision. When I, I'm talking of splendor, gold, I understand what the Bible says that silver can become dust. There is a level. I, I, have you seen a level where nobody is a beggar? Nobody is. It's not like somebody competing with another. How much is your rapper? People, and the, I noticed this in the vision. People were not even concerned about, you know, all these things that people think about. It was extreme worship. A magnificent auditorium. Thousands of people. Flags of nations and people were worshipping. Let me tell you. If the mouth of the Lord declares this, his spirit will make it happen. Yeah. Hmm. We have grown up in environments that have cultured us into believing we will never amount to anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are largely victims of the programmings and the limitations of our environment. So when God utters a word in his majesty, I hope you know that every man speaks according to his ability. If a little boy says, I will buy you a car, you don't say amen. Because you know that the child may have desire, but there's no ability. Before God speaks or shows something, he searches whether he can make it happen. So if at all he declares anything, it's up to us to believe. Can we turn this vision I just saw into a prayer for yourself? And say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have revealed your desire for me. I will step into it. Splendor. Leka parota skelebia shata. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign, and we shall reign. It didn't say we shall struggle and we shall reign and we shall reign. It says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. 
I said they shall reign. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I began challenging us last week about a mystery that God showed me. You see, one of the one of the blessings of the apostolic office. In fact, it's not just a blessing, it is also the proof is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality. Aside from spiritual governance you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and god allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. that if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that god has committed these two things happen to you number one illumination is granted unto you number two the capacity he says, as many as received him, even unto them that believed in his name, he gave them the power to become. When you believe it and you receive it, then power is released to become that experience. Hallelujah. And so, I have taught us again that in this kingdom, dominion is a product of, of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom this is what we call the word of god the word of god is many things but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of god comes from the word logos the logos of god the thoughts of a man carefully calculated thoughts an extension of that word word means the mindset of a man are we together now so when you study the word of god you are accessing the mindset of god the wisdom of god and the bible says let this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was an understanding there was a comprehension in the christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced and the bible says that if that mind is in you it can cause you regardless of what limitation to produce that result hallelujah this bible was given to us as a gift holy men the bible says wrote as they were inspired of the spirit now the bible in itself theologically speaking still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters and some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year you see obvious um limitations things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added but regardless of the limitation the word of god is still intact the word of god is not 66 books no 66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of god are we together now if all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the bible you can access the word of god through it it is not just in reading genesis to revelations that you access the word of god that vastness is given as a symbol of god's mercy and grace so that regardless of how you come what angle you come you will still access the word of god you have to understand what i'm saying there are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands yet they can have access to the word of god the word of god is not the reading of the book for there are different alterations to different bible versions i don't want to go into all those theological debates there are many books that 
uh, uh, argued whether it should be added to the book or not. And, and people argue as it will not, it will not change the word of God. The word of God is eternal. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter what error in interpretation. That's too small a reason to alter the word of God. The Bible says the word of God liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. Are we together now? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation, scripture tells us that we are born of the word. Born of the word. Born of the word. But much more than being born of the word, the Holy Spirit, when he comes into the life of a believer, his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of God's word. Jesus was speaking, John 15, John 16. He began to talk to us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you read John 16 and verse 12, it was, it was, it was said that he, when he comes, he will guide us. The Holy Spirit guides you. He is the spirit of truth. But he, he will guide you into all truth. He will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error. Hallelujah. Listen. The quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of God. But not just the word of God alone. I shared it last week. Remember, our access to it first. Then our ability to engage the word. This word of God issue is a very serious issue. Two scriptures all said the same thing. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. We are talking about a life and death issue, brothers and sisters. We are not talking about something that you can live without. It says, and he humbled them. Afterwards, go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what? Man! Does not live by bread only, but by every word. How many? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That means both the quality and the quantity of your life, listen, is dependent on the word of God. When Jesus came, Give us Matthew chapter 4, please, and verse 4. Satan was attempting to tempt Jesus, and here was his reply. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life, whether sickness destiny career is the cure is in the mouth the word of god the word of god you hear people talk about the word of god but many believers have not given the kind of attention that is required to produce the results they desire the word of god man so we are talking about an issue of life and death here that if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of God, he will die both spiritually and physically. The secret to the mysteries of God is in his word. The secret to the multifaceted dimensions of God's possibilities is hidden in his word. The secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God. The secret for restoration, just like the worship team beautifully sang, the word of God, the secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God. But you see, believers pay very little attention to the word of God. And there is a reason for that. It's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God. We preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God we will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them 
than to stand and access the word of God. We will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner. It is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything. The word of God is reliable. The word of God is dependable. The word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment. Please don't forget this. The word of God is reliable. The word of God is faithful. It would deliver as promised. If I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch, the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable, whether I am trustable, and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch. So when you think and say lunch, uh, no matter what, you should be able to afford it, then you believe me. Is that true? Everything, brothers and sisters, declared by the word of God for your destiny is doable by the word. The word of God is not a scam. The word of God is not some fraud, some trickster. The word of God is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity. So there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable. No. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. Listen carefully. Heaven and earth will pass away. It says, but the word of God remains eternal. I do not trust anything that is not built upon the word. I don't care how solid it looks. You are watching a mirage. It will evaporate. The vicissitudes of life will force it to move away. Are we together? It says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock. It's the issue is not the house. The issue is what it was built on. Brothers and sisters, our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions. We are building our life on emotions. Building our lives on uncle, connection, degrees. Building our lives on, on lottery. Building our lives on business building our lives on money building our lives on intelligence that's a risk it's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed how safe is that yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of god is worse than that and we do it every day for some it's been so all their life my assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of God. My assignment is to indoctrinate you, to bring you to a point where you are, you become one experientially with the word. That your life is built upon the word. Brothers and sisters, I give you a guarantee you will never fail. I don't want to know what is happening in your life. You will never fail. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, John in his gospel was teaching. He said, in the beginning, when your uncle was not there, listen carefully. When the university was not there, when no business idea was there, when no seminar was there, in the beginning, when there was no customer, in the beginning, where there was no producer, in the beginning where there was no lecturer it says in the beginning was the word the word is ancient in the beginning was the word and the word as a person was with god and the word himself was god verse 2 says that the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 it says how many things please talk to me how many things all things were made by now when the bible tells you all things were made by the word you should pay attention because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word 
your finances can be made by the word it's not there the word is what will make it the ministry can be made by the word the home can be made by the word in the beginning was the word he said all things were made by him and without him ha, this is a revelation already was not anything made that was made that means if it ever appeared the word of god made it happen this for me is healing from every fear this is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things by the word of his power the word of god is a matter of life and death the word of god is not the issue of christianity the word of god is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of god there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of god it doesn't mean you're a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of god has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word i know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle peter is teaching us something first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which does what liveth and abideth forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever the word of god is the only way to commit god to the affairs of your life the word of god is not one of the ways it is the only way an individual a believer can commit god to the affairs of his life you ignore the word of god you will pity yourself and just become emotional believing that god is in the affairs of your life many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of god with our pride and arrogance believing that we can believe we can build our lives many people are building homes without the word of god many people are building financial destinies without the word of god when you talk about the word of god they don't exactly refuse it they just they are passive about it they have not seen how to engage it
God's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. Please write it down. God's word is a compendium. God's word is a compendium of all, not some, all the possibilities that are resident in God. God's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. There are many things that the word of God can do. A number of them, not all of them, a number of them were chronicled in this Bible. The 66 books are a representation just a sample of what God can do the Bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories the stories are finite the power of God is infinite meaning that if the Bible were to be written continually there are more things that we will see about God the Bible says many miracles Jesus did which were not recorded in this scripture but this has been written because it is enough to make us believe hallelujah the bible is a compendium of all the possibilities in this bible impossible situations were turned around in this bible sick people were healed in this bible god took people from the dung hill in this bible farmers became prophets in this bible prostitutes became the great grandmothers of jesus in this bible god turned around families in this bible money failed and god turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations in this bible men lost things and received it back in this bible god stepped in miraculously in this bible angels fought for men so that when you see it you can have a, a consolation that the word of God is reliable are we together the word of God is dependable the word of God is trustable you can throw your life to it I believe the word of God with all my heart I will be foolish today to ever say I do not believe the word of God but the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of God does not work automatically. Let's walk this thing now. This is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes. Somehow they believe that if the word of God is powerful and potent, it should be able to work regardless of my impute. That thing I believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons. The Bible says that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons. One of it is the misconception of the operation of the word this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the word how the word works hallelujah the word of god does not work automatically it was jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man the man was good the seed which was the word of god was good the Bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds. Some fell by the wayside. Some on thorns. Is that true? Some on a rocky ground. And some on good soil. Very good word. Accurate seed. But there were some soils that made the word of God not to produce. To the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed. They were not afraid. They ate it. Listen to Jesus' own interpretation. He said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear. He says Satan comes. Satan is not afraid of the word. Satan is afraid of your understanding and your engaging it. Don't you ever 
make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of God the devil will run away have you forgotten that he was Lucifer the light bearer Satan was the custodian of the mysteries of God it was his office in heaven Satan does not fear the word brothers and sisters when Satan came to Jesus he used it is written good student of the word Satan is never ever your access to the word does not scare the devil it is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it that's what paralyzes the gates of hell that you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed that you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper that you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right is God helping us tonight please I beg you in the name of Jesus I want you to listen to me if you listen to what I'm teaching you I promise you for some of you it will be a matter of days you will watch things turn around in your life this thing works it's just that we are engaging it inaccurately that's why it's not producing the desired results the word of God does not work automatically no sir they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them if you do not profit in business what happens to you you lose there's nothing like neutral so if the word of God does not profit a man it means on account of that word he can lose some things yes it is the word the correct word Jonah carried a word from God entered a boat with the word made people to lose everything with the word in him because the word was wrongly engaged the word was for Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered that you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well huh. are we together if Moses never had an encounter with God he would have been spared but Moses saw certain dimensions of the word and God would not tolerate certain things from him and said no Moses your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief you are not entering the promised land period if he was blind he would have entered quietly The word does not work automatically many believers in the body of Christ this is what we have been taught the moment come doctor the moment you find the word believe it confess it go and sleep hey. listen I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting I am I am a confessor of the word listen 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 this is a system go and buy rice buy fish buy oil drop everything heat your pot and go and sit down talk to me ladies that sounds to me like rice well prepared rice no sir while you are in the parlor keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready you are doing the right thing but after a very wrong approach are you seeing that now this is what many of us have done we just get a scripture in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says I shall lend to nations I will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say god let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete that means your obedience can be incomplete it is obedience but it is not complete are we together yeah. planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and miss one or two steps have you seen people have accident because they just slept the, the car was going well the fuel but they missed a step 
and that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because i have seen the word of god and just jumped around it it won't work that way i want to show you tonight how to engage the word i started last week i want to show you the operation how does this thing work the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see i love everybody but i don't listen to everybody i love everybody i am open to learn but i have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results i want to get i don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what i believed yesterday i want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that i attain something very tangible i've always shared it is like taking lectures everywhere will you be awarded a degree at the end of it today you go to medicine next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts and then next tomorrow you just go to pg block and just stand by the door and attend anything you are writing after many years you have been engaging randomly it is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding up along the path of a field this is how it is many of us are not in ignorance of what we want but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome this brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people you will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if god does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters god is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of god compels him to action the darkness the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light wonderful sympathetic to that environment but until the word of god came nothing changed hallelujah engaging the word of god <clears throat> scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light listen the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple the entrance not the reading not the recitation not the quoting not the watching the entrance there is an activity of the word when it enters into your spirit truly the bible says it can give light and then dependent on your state it can graduate from light to understanding are we together now that's what the bible says would happen to us and if we understand how the word of god works then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another the laws of god listen to me the laws of god are a representation of his love and his justice you have to understand this don't let the laws of god irritate you they are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory thank you james chapter 1 we're reading from verse 22 to 25 james chapter 1 apostle james is teaching us now james chapter 1 but be ye doers of the word. Everyone say doers of the word. And not hearers only. Then he says if you are a hearer only, what are you doing to yourself? Deceiving yourselves. To 25. 
For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, what is it called? The law that liberates men. The law of liberty that when you access it it can set you free from any bondage and continue daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results I must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later ah I see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time is God speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the Bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong I don't know about you but I'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working I don't lie that it's working I go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way I cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way Lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by God to guide me there is the truth somewhere and I begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever Pray in one minute, Lord, show me what I'm not doing right. Show me what I'm not doing right. I take responsibility. I would have been healed by now. There is something I'm not getting. I'm missing a step for sure. What is closing the doors of favor over my life? Why does this sickness leave and come back? Why, why, why do people help me today and hate me tomorrow? Why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow? There is something I do not know. Why do I see the power of God move mightily in a meeting today? And then tomorrow it's as if I was not the one who God used yesterday. Why do I preach powerfully today? And then tomorrow I turn around and it's as if I'm barren of utterance. What am I missing? Oh God, show me these systems. why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing 
because the word of God lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable Lord I'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no I humble myself I mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where I'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where I'm missing it that's the place where Satan has capitalized on my result let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and Joshua Selman a liar God cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where I am God cannot lie God cannot lie God does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and Abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10% of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you're a madman you're, there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when Jesus saw madmen read your Bible every madman Jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it number one <laughs> Number one, we do not engage the word with understanding. The first reason why the word of God seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us, but not based on understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. In all your sowing, sow with understanding in all your praying pray with understanding 
in all your serving serve with understanding in all your dancing dance with understanding the bible says whatever it is that you get have an understanding of what you are doing that's the first reason why the word of god seems important the second reason is that the word of god is not engaged at all the word of god may be believed it may even be received but it's not engaged the word of god is not engaged at all we leave the responsibility of engaging the word to god and let me tell you where this mistake came from it is in not knowing that the grace of god like wisdom and like love are multifaceted everybody say multifaceted there are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do so the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the lordship of jesus the moment you do that the bible says you are saved for with the heart this is how this operation works for with the heart man believes unto righteousness romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 i believe and verse 20 it says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think above that who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking you i'm doing the thinking i'm doing the asking but i am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all i do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it read your bible deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe do and observe do and observe all that is written how many all all that is written all that if you do not just hear not just speak do according to all that the lord commands not according to the way you want then it lists a number of promises that the lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you then it begins to list them there is a doing listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to god's command is called partnership is what great men of god will call covenant 
the obedience that binds you and commits you to God please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all so here's how it works come this is a promise by God Emeka I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful I am going to make you such an anointed man see from scripture this is my destiny for you this is God speaking now it is left for Emeka to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny Lord are you not powerful who am I weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer Satan wants because he comes and says look look if God is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how Satan plays with our minds he said God he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say Lord I just confess and leave everything and God says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing god father this is how we pray look up father i pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family lord are you not looking at my father what is i'm reading that you are a merciful god what is all this nonsense oh god then you apologize and get back again okay lord i'm, I'm serious what i'm trying to say is can, will you not step into my family and god says look there is an ordinance i bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh god have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony i guarantee you if you are one of them i show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what sir isaac newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move i must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind those kinds of people will never rise so how does the word how does god himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that God is alive 
and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing i know the person i have believed and i am persuaded in his ability i am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of god now this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes because it is the spirit of god that makes jesus real to believers miracles do not make jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away so the first thing is an encounter an encounter with god the foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that god is alive and number two that he is mighty and able you have to settle that otherwise your journey to exploring the word of god is a waste many religions teach all kinds of things about jesus christ and about god and even in the christian faith there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about god there are people who believe that god is not really god he's just one of the many deities so the adam is an all-inclusive thought about god that god the name god is like a man with so many dimensions and jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions if that's what you believe the word will not profit you you see that yes number two when your conviction is settled now listen carefully number two is that there must be a searching the bible says for everyone that seeketh find it there must be a searching you don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything all keys don't open any door there are specific keys for specific doors are we together now yes you cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the holy ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there but you just stand oh and he was alone and you just quote it and say lord I, I i at least it's the bible bible is bible no sir no sir all this humanist point of view that keep punishing us you have to find the accurate word the key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom the key to your bedroom does not open your car the key to your car does not open the safe of a bank they all require keys but you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern and where you do not know those scriptures follow those who have conquered in that area they have conquered by the word you see how it is so this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing and i'm trusting god now i believe god wants to anoint me i'm tired of my church struggling sick people not being healed and i search around i'm in ignorance and i just find out okay the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i receive but nothing is working it means i have to explore it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery all you do is just read the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i believe now the holy ghost is upon me and you get up you are seeing that nothing is working 
that's to tell you there is more than that thing you read every time the obvious does not produce result go prophetic immediately it means there is there is a deeper understanding every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire there must be a prophetic interpretation so i access her materials and i sit with the holy spirit and then i trust him to begin to open me up now listen 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 when you begin to study the bible and meditate upon it you need time and you need concentration two things that we lack in this our distracted generation time and concentration you can't be cooking and trying to access revelation you quickly the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you you run and then while you are trying to off the gas you return back you won't continue where you left you will start afresh again it's like worship when you finish worshiping and they take light you hope that they bring it fast if you don't bring that light after 30 minutes don't think they just bring it and you continue no somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone time and concentration let me tell you this many believers are distracted it's a strategy of satan you are studying your bible and playing computer game satan yes sir satan i didn't say satan made the game Satan created that system to distract you. Studying your Bible and making a long call. Then what did you say? I'm still on it. No. No, sir. No, sir. Study great men. How does God reveal these things to them? When there was a need for revelation, Daniel said, Oh, king, don't worry. Just give us time. Daniel was not loitering around. In the silence, then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. There are some of us who believe that because you are always around people, it's a sign that you are a famous person. Let me advise you. You may not be very great if your entire life is corporate. You must understand the power of a private life. Are we together? It's good to have a corporate fellowship. It's good to be with your husband, your wife, your children. But there are times, listen, certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone. Even demons work like that. There are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone. There are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone. I want you to learn this. These things I'm teaching you are, are the ways God has opened me up to revelation. You need conviction, then you need to search out. Let me take one area that is very obvious for us. Let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity. For instance, things are not working in your life. Things are not working in your family. Let me tell you what many of us say. Oh God, I've been crying about this employment issue. It won't you wipe my tears and give me a job. Be very honest. Is it a job that is going to solve your problem? I'm not saying a job is bad. But you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom. Not a job. You don't make money off job. You don't make money off business. You make money off understanding. Are we together now? Yes. And so the person just says, well, Lord, I thank you. And then you believe that things will change. Or your health. You are trusting God. The devil is afflicting your body. Afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible i i got a very powerful revelation from bishop david Oedico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that i cannot begin to explain do you know that satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty it doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me 
these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you, are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us and say you are, you are you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons i pray for people and i look at certain sicknesses i know that this has to be a demon praise the lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, a, a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of i say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes them by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is god speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because i've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God. Sir, poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life. Take it from me. When you stand and see an empty plate before you, you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are, you are thinking still it. Are we together you know we don't tell ourselves the truth in church we lie to ourselves is that true is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if god has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of god do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as they are counting the finance department they write a check a blank check they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men 
please answer me how much does the poor man have is he not a big man somewhere that promises them that I will change your life and you are there and your ends have not met then you, you don't know where dinner will come from yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue there are people now some of you students school is about to resume and the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from so when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of god stopped loving god and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what god is saying these are strategies of the enemy please i if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints you are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now as soon as they graduate they just say lord i want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy i just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down you say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension i was running your your school you are staying one year to see god that means i'm not a christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny i'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say i want to leave society says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Hi. may god raise a generation of people that will access these things you know years ago i listened to our father in the lord bishop oyedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry i don't want to sit down serving god thinking about money imagine if i was thinking about my daily bread i now prophesy to you and say sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it. Let me tell you, prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can sit down and spend time worshiping. Bless your people, oh God. Not come and say you are joining the queue. Where is the envelope you are holding? You, you can imagine that kind of thing. So it's not every man of God you see doing these things that are bad. They have not understood how to engage. This is what I'm trying to bail you from. Are we together do you know how to command results or are you aware that results can be commanded do you know how to command it or are you aware brothers and sisters if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death do you know how to come out or do you hope you will come out There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear are power twins that satan brings to your life to disturb you on one side you are afraid but on another side there is tremendous arrogance so they will not learn when i find somebody who has an understanding in an area i don't i will not argue no matter what i don't understand about what he's saying i give his revelation a chance there are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor listen to a message and say this is not correct look at the person talking are we together 
there are many people who have never prophesied they have never seen anything and they will tell you hear God alone don't listen to a man of God the person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of God nobody needs to prophesy to your life forget about just do this and and for this cause many are weak there are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for but they can stay for 10 years they've done everything well but one thing is needful and they've missed it are we together don't criticize what you don't understand let your heart be open to say lord speak to me It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word? Let's start with our spiritual life. Some of you think I'll start with money. Listen first. Your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. <laughs> if I ask you, how do we grow spiritually? What are you going to tell me? I read my Bible. And I pray every day. Question. Have you not been doing it? Have you been growing? <laughs> are we together? There are many liars in church. We just open the Bible in the morning and read anywhere. We are just come. It's the purpose of reading the Bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual. They just open any scripture. And Abraham did this. Then they open another one. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Then they pray, Lord, I thank you. Today is blessed. I speak to this day. And then they come out and their lives are messed up. And after many years, they don't grow. Brothers and sisters, that's not how we grow in the kingdom. You never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words. Take it from me. No, you don't grow that way. Not in the anointing, not in the knowledge of God. I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29. Read it with me. One to read. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. The last three words, please. One to read. One more time. One more time. You see these three words? That is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God. He says, and ye will seek me. Many are doing it. But you will only find me when you search for me with everything. Everything. Brothers and sisters, your motive and your hunger for God vetoes your fasting. It vetoes your prayer. It vetoes your study of Bible and your reading of books. There are many of those who wrote the Bible. They work in Zondavan. They work in White Taker House, the publishing companies, but they are not born again. Printing the Bible and walking around it does not bring growth. 
there is a depth of hunger read your bible everyone who found god in the bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of god mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search ye shall seek me hear what david said a man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the bible does not mean you pant after god it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing i know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with god an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you didn't an encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of God meet God. An encounter is where those who are desperate for him, they say, oh God, as a matter of life and death, that is the place where he washes you. That is the place where he builds you. You don't have an encounter, you will never grow spiritually. We can flatter ourselves. Listen, the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth. There is a big deception sweeping the body of Christ. And thank God I walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe I'm just talking. Listen, I can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace. The anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth. It is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office. If that anointing comes on a handkerchief, it will produce the same result. Handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives. Listen, that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they will be healed. After 10 days, find out whether he will still do it again. It's gone. Because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you are like this is is this thing? is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them service is going on they are at the back of the church gisting taking sugar cane eating biscuit they now say it's time for elijah to come and minister and then just cleans his mouth and comes and after five minutes you see people rolling on the floor and you finish you say my god elijah no sir no sir god does not judge you based on the gift in your office it's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the bible out of competition to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now uh the axe head will float again ah, i remember 2004 i preached a message like that just dust it add a and b 
are we blessed the starting point of your spiritual life is to trust God for a hunger that can last your lifetime mm. I will give up ministry a thousand times some of you don't like what I'm saying because I said I'll talk about money too you better listen to what I'm telling you because this is this is what will make money not kill you I want you to ask the Lord he will tell you there is nothing in this life nothing in this life that I cannot give God ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for God the measure of your love for God is not sung when you say you love this lady she says sir I've not eaten I say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension I'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see God do in my life today I submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting is because God knows that anything he gives me is his own ah, my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen I'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the Bible how many pastors move around oh my member my choir my this and God says all right so you pay the bills you 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 decorate everything you bring members by yourself how many churches put pressure on their people go and bring five souls otherwise you pastor will look at you and say I saw three please 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 John Wesley said set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you born where the carcasses are brothers and sisters that's where the eagle will come there are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning my heart belongs to you my life belongs to you when i go to pray he is lord of my prayer I don't just go -da 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 -da, as if I'm a fool as if you are, you are, you are chanting a, a charm I approach God like one who is totally dependent on him he is the Lord of my prayer life many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy so when we do it and someone is watching you you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior no sir this is not how spiritual things work above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you there is a meeting place and i i i'm desperate for you hey help that lady and i This is how it works in the kingdom and uh, hey, I'm desperate for you listen man of God let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you because every time you think power you think conference you think of a plane flying you around every time you think God you think honorarium every time you think God you think man of God you imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying this is apostle and God says you know where you fast try hundred days and God says in spite of it and ye shall seek me and only find me and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches oh, 
why is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter Encounter is not sitting down and no. It is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment. There were people who will lock, gone are the days when people lock themselves from morning till night. Now, when people lock themselves to pray, it is, oh God, give me a wife. Oh God, give me a husband. I'm not saying these things are wrong. Oh God, give me this. Oh God, I must graduate. Oh God, I must get a job. Service, what is all this nonsense? And ye shall seek me. Please, God is not a joker. Let me tell you. If all of you does not seek him, forget about it. There are ladies seeking God only to prepare themselves for ministry. No, you won't find God that way. If at any point you find yourself using God, just know that you and the anointing, you and glory, you are far. Please hear what I'm telling you. I, I never started, hold on, I never started my walk with God knowing I will even be a preacher. One, one gentleman came here, I think some months ago, with documents from his ministry, well articulated, and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a... i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me all of me, use all of me. Hey. I lay my everything, take my everything, I release my everything, take my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place. I'm not a musician. This, this is what happens when you want to grow. Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences. But brothers and sisters, these men were seekers of God. There was a prophetess called Anna. The Bible says she stayed in the temple. Stayed in the temple. Since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple listen preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean it's releasing life the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it
Listen. Honestly speaking, we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God. We know how to preach. We know how to sing. We know how to produce albums. We know how to write books. But to seek his face. Where you are fasting not because you want power. You are saying, Lord, show me more of you. Reveal yourself to me. I remember those days in the night. Those of you in vet, vet uh, faculty of, um, what they call it now? Vet. There is a place, one of the neglected places. I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night. I would be there till morning. Crying and saying, Lord, I've created a place where no one can distract us. Reveal yourself. I wasn't looking for power. Reveal yourself. Right now, what happens in the church is just an is just a galore of talent. Galore of talent. I am this. I read this. I know this. I dress like this. No, sir. That's why we have lost the power of God in the body of Christ. As we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with God Lord I rehand my life again take all of me all of me Lord hey, use all of me all of me, Lord, take all of me, all of me, Lord, I give all of me, all of me, Lord, listen, the Bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the bible says she came before god with her treasure a representation of her all let me show you how to get the heart of god other people were coming with all their we know that moses said this and he said this is not what i'm looking for but here comes a woman the bible says she came with sparking out pure nard one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before God the king poured it the Bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give God your heart and take finance you can give God finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what I'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that working with God does not pay no you want to do business with god there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving god eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of god in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days. You will not see anything. You want to see demons crying out as you minister. Brothers and sisters, it's not running around to look for a man of God. You, a man cannot impart his secret place. No, sir. Impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation. One of the most deceptive things happening in the body of Christ now is this grace for impartation people just write the names of five or ten men of god around that they think are anointed and divide seats like a business and hop from one location to the other touch me and then they snap i i i got impartation from this hey, Jimmy, please i got impartation for wealth apostle i got impartation for this prophet this give me your own then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings you are joking you think god is that cheap he said many are called though but few are chosen 
gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone like roommate and you hear people groaning and crying before God in the night now people snort their way till morning a pastor a preacher oh God anything that will take your presence from my life may it not come 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 ministry I will give it up a thousand times money marriage children a thousand a million times listen those of you here who God has called into ministry or you are going into ministry please let me give you a loving caution be careful be careful who you follow matters be careful there is a path there is a path that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for God people follow your hunger not your talk while you are talking people are watching you and they will find out is it true that this person hungers after God brothers and sisters I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message but the presence of God that left them left me going back to cry and say from whence cometh this man which depth where did this what did this person touch that's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke crusade I didn't go there to hear revelation I was already preaching I was already working in miracles I went to hear a man who knew God he talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it let's return back to the secret place let's return back to retreats it's a language we are not used to again learn to off your phone no please learn to source especially now that is December don't enter do you know why we end Koinonia we have just one more service and we are done that one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before just go back and say ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it Christmas holiday it's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time no more counseling no more ministrations and let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation not looking for power for next year not looking for prophetic word for next year I don't get the prophetic word by searching I get the prophetic word by worshiping God and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me there are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me they are waiting to hear something a revelation oh Greek logos and then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship gentlemen I shipped something from somewhere we will keep mocking ourselves with this thing you don't fake presence when you carry the presence of God it is palpable 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 something happened I don't know when when which of the days now it was I was alone and someone came to see me and I wasn't even out here the person just sat down I went in and all of a sudden I came and saw the person shaking like a leaf shaking like a leaf and I looked I said my God do you know why because you can make your house a habitation of angels all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God is death not prayer not Bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the Word of God now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say I've gotten to the throne 
I wish I can go through this death for you. It is one thing I know that you cannot pass through as a group. Listen to my message, knowing God experientially. There are some of us, the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons. They are the constraints that God must subject you through to cause you to know him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, until I walked there, I never knew that I can fear no evil. We live in a generation that binds everything. We don't have discernment to know whether it is of God, whether it is a furnace that God is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually. A pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him. Anything you see that is not favorable to your senses, you cast it. And many of us have casted the realms from which power will come. There are people who God will say, all of you go for work. Gone are the days where people hear God like this. And somebody says, you owe for you. Two years you are with me. No work for you. And everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you. And saying this, your stupid man of God has turned your head upside down. And you feel that pain. And it is in that pain you know something about God. We don't have experiences that make us know God. We are full of theory. There is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter. You don't know God by theory. People are in a rush to go to, for ministry. Some of us, when God called us, He took His grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves. We knew it was not the issue of intellect. Is God speaking to you? I remember those days when we traveled for crusade. It was not the boosting of a man of God's ego. People looked forward to encounters. Encounters with the power of God. Never embarrassed by our failures. Right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things. If someone prayed for the sick and he, did, he was not healed, you may not see that person for the next three days. Not because the person is, not because his tongue is ego. It's a revelation that you must know more. And the person will want to lock himself. Lord, there's got to be more. But right now, pastor lays hands on 90 people. 90 people don't get healed. And he says, well, at least we had a successful, intellectually sound meeting. Will I ever be that kind of preacher? Do you have time for God? I know you have a Bible. I know you pray, but do you have time for God? Show me the book where you record his voice. Show me the encounters. Show me the personal vigils that you do. Personal vigils, not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything. Alone. I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God, I would never forget. I came around Chapel of Redemption there. He was in the rain. It was raining, yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort, and we are angry. Nah, no. I can't go to church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They wouldn't think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something. You turn, ah, this lady that I like, this other one who respects me. My son is here. My daughter is here. Death. That's why we fight. I am Apostle Joshua Selman, not Brother Joshua Selman. Fight. That's a sign that you are alive in yourself. Please, in one minute, if I'm unable to continue, no problem. I'd like you to be honest. I want us to repent this night. Let's take five minutes. I don't know what position you will assume. Worship just set the atmosphere for us with the cymbal. Play the strings. I want to hear that sound of the strings. I give you five minutes with your makeup. Please. I'd like you to cry your heart to Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to be honest. Yeah. 
na manhã na maçã na madeira da 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 Sing it from your heart where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your love. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. that you are walking in the midst of your people Jesus is in this place not the Holy Spirit not angels I know when his presence is in a building Jesus we thank you we pray make your presence known Father make your presence known Lord Jesus, make your presence known in our hearts. This is what I pray tonight. 
I pray make your presence known Make your presence known Make your presence known And I We thank you for your presence You have come to reveal yourself to us and we embrace that presence walk among us tonight walk among us tonight plant a fire in our hearts we choose to honor you with our lives with our hearts and everything that we have We're not in a hurry. Lord, we bless you for your mighty, mighty presence. I'm telling you the presence of Jesus is in this place. I know he's in this place. The spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride say come let your will be done tonight let us see your face to see your face once again to hear your voice once again to see your face once again once again in the glory I will stand I will stand and lift my hands in the glory I will receive every miracle you have for me it's in the glory Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna Come on, go ahead and pray in tongues. There is a ladder we are climbing in the spirit tonight. It's a night of encounter. 
We will sing in the spirit. For who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Sakata Bragada Balabash, Sakata Paka Prashka Branda Tabaraba. We accept the heel of the Lord. Sata Prata Kata Prada Balada Bakata Bragada Balaba. Forget about your weakness of your body. Sakata Prata Skalabash is the protocol for an encounter. Is the protocol for an encounter. But tapping into the laws of the spirit that will open us into the vistas of his presence. Edify yourself in the spirit. Activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. Is the law of the secret place. Is the law of the secret place. When you seek him, you will find him. Outside, participate. The spirit of God is mighty outside. Charge your spirit man. Activate your capacity to comprehend spiritual things. Let him arise above your needs, above your accolades. of your presence expose yourself to that atmosphere that Shekinah the glory that changes the glory that transforms in the glory where seed time and harvest coexist together His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave me victory. I have been. Come on, sing. We're just going to press a little further. We are served. We're not serving an idol. Is there? Is Jesus? Miracles are already taking place as we're worshiping. He died and he rose. Be the name of the Lord. 
Father, tonight we desire an encounter. Open us up to portals, realms, vistas in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, open us up to these deep dimensions. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Sing it, Savior, Savior, Savior. I don't care what they are. Sing it, sir. All of the ground is sinking, sir. On Christ, the solid rock. All of the Father, tonight, reveal yourself to us. Show us something about you that we have never seen. Put a fire in our spirit. Let there be a displacing of everything that has taken your place in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 63 hmm. O God Thou art my God Early will I seek Thee My soul thirsted for Thee My flesh longed for Thee In a dry and thirsty land Where there is no water Verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise you hallelujah I want to talk to you tonight from the depths of my heart I'm not really preaching tonight I want everybody to listen Hallelujah. Lord God Almighty. You know that song? Holy. Holy. Lord God Almighty. There's only one word to There's only one word to describe And only one word comes to When you truly stand before His presence Only one word to describe mm -hmm. holy, the 
That's the word. Holy Lord, Lord God Almighty. Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little story about my life. I have been very, very concerned about the way people are being built in the body of Christ. And every time I say this, people misinterpret it for pride or arrogance. But the way God trained me is not the way many people have been trained in the body of Christ and I know that something is wrong hallelujah there is a lot of jumping of processes in the progressions of the spirit there is a lot of seeming principles of shortcuts to access authentic power and the presence of God to an extent that there are many people who claim that they are having spiritual encounters but there's nothing about their life so many people lie to us that they see angels and there is nothing there is no reaction in their lives many people tell us they see beings in the spirit let me tell you something if you see anything that is outside this realm something must happen to you hallelujah I want to share with you something very powerful i want to share with you how i began my journey in the spirit and how the holy ghost led me and you will see the reason why many people may never find god in terms of encounter there are many preachers lying to people many preachers deceiving people just because of they are not fake they are just not telling the truth hallelujah it doesn't take an encounter to speak English. Utterance is not the same as oratory. You can get oratory by good education. You know what utterance is? Utterance is the bridge between your encounter and the people you want to communicate it to. The encounter is so deep, you do not have the frame, the framework of the lingua franca to help them see the other side of what you are saying and so paul prayed and said I've, I've, there is something in my spirit but how to make you see it pray for me that god will grant me an ability that is not human an ability to make you enter my experience as i speak to you this is what is called utterance there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of christ and now I know I'm not old enough and experienced enough to challenge many things yet. Let me tell you something. I do not boast of knowing all the principles of church growth, principles of prosperity, principles of increase, principles of training and mentorship and building people. But there is one thing I know. I know the protocol of an encounter. This one, a man did not teach me. Paul said, I know a man 14 years ago in Arabia. Whether he was in the body or in the spirit, I do not know. But he said that he saw things that were not permitted for men to utter. There were things that John saw and he said, seal this. Don't bring this. The people do not have the capacity to take this depth of encounter. Seal it. It's for an appointed time. There is a lot a lot of theory and and these theories are not wrong but let me tell you when a man meets god when you hear him there is an anointing that brings you into his experience hallelujah that's what happened prophet samuel was a man who had encountered god saul came into that atmosphere when he entered an anointing compelled him into the prophetic all of a sudden he began to prophesy accurately the bible says he prophesied naked from morning till night 
and men looked and said it's Saul or it wasn't because Saul was anointed there was an atmosphere that pulled him into that experience the presence of this man called Samuel hallelujah one time they came to capture the armies I mean they came to capture the prophet of God Elijah and when they came the Philistines I believe they, 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 they gathered around and he prayed and the servant was perplexed because see he was sitting in another realm his confidence was not of this realm and the servant was shaking and he said oh Lord would you not bring this man into my experience let him see what gives me this audacity let him see what informs my confidence all of a sudden his eyes were open and he saw that them were greater than what they are see you will never understand a man's passion until you know what drives him until you see what he has seen until you hear what he has heard and the bible says moses was at the back side tending his father-in-law's sheep and he saw a bush the bible didn't say many people saw only one man moses and when he went there he had an encounter hallelujah there are so many people looking for power and and that's not wrong there are so many people looking for power they want the power to heal the sick they want the power to do this and that and that because according to their church growth seminar they were told that if you have power and you have results men will come to your church or to your assembly whatever it is let me tell you the truth I'm about to correct some things and set a right very very wrong when I began my pursuit for God listen to me I had no ambition to be a preacher whatsoever hallelujah if anybody would have told me that today I'll be standing taking the message of the kingdom I would never believe it hallelujah there are people already who sit down is part of their ambition they think it's a profession they are so desperate to start ministry they are so desperate to gather members they've not done anything they have the name of the ministry already they have the name of where the church will be i'm not saying what god gave them they sat down and pushed they have the name of everything their cathedral the kind of bosses that will come nonsense and they do not know the person that they are going to represent can i tell you something almost everybody god called was on his way running away from god's presence if you really know what ministry is hallelujah this is the reason why many people do not experience the presence of god and every time they find a man who has followed the protocol of an encounter they begin to bring all sorts of criticisms because certain possibilities do not exist in their life and they do not know that there is a price it's more than bible college it's more than theological seminary it's more than longevity around the church building hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying i began to seek god with so much passion listen i remember i will never forget second of december 2002 i was sleeping in the night and a man walked into my room sleeping and all of a sudden i felt it not in a vision i was not in any vision i was i, I was i was conscious of myself and he tapped me I felt the tap of a man and I was alone I was shocked I was afraid all of a sudden I turned I didn't see any man but it left an experience it was as if it was like a force at once I knew things I did not learn I started crying until morning I felt I felt filthy I felt unclean practically unclean it wasn't because i was fornicating or doing any bad thing a presence a realm was introduced to my life that rattled my theology 
rattled everything that I had known. For days, I was crying. I could not even eat. Let me tell you the truth. I was sobbing and crying. I was not in control of the tears. I didn't understand the presence of God. Do you know because of that the passion that was in my spirit i got a notebook i still have the notebook i wrote a letter to all my friends my extended family in the village that was all i knew it was a letter on rapture that jesus was coming and everyone needed to pay attention that was all that i knew there was such a passion for souls not ministry not power not healing not deliverance not prosperity not money not influence souls the heartbeat of the father god hides himself in light he will give you a glimpse and hide himself so that you will look for him hallelujah i i always waited for the night time where everybody will go and sleep and then i would wake up and these encounters i kept writing letters i carried a bulk of my clothes i told my mother to give me a bulk of her clothes and a number of people i called my brother who was then studying in shika came home and we prayed on the clothes i drove down to an orphanage home i went to visit those orphans and do a lot of things i wasn't in ministry the bible says the spirit moved jesus drove him i didn't even know what the name of that experience was all i knew was that it was an encounter no one could deny hallelujah people would come around me and just sit quietly and within minutes they are sober and they are telling me the problems of their lives i wasn't a preacher I would study the word chapter after chapter i couldn't understand anything at that time i was having very serious eye problem i couldn't even look at light for a long time and i said if my eyes will come out let it come out passion i would cry and tell the lord reveal yourself to me who is this stranger that walked into my room didn't show me his face didn't know anything about the holy spirit hallelujah years before that time we had had encounter the baptism of the holy spirit and as very very small boys we did wonderful things we were not even conscious that the things that were happening were miracles it was dramatic js2 js2 I was made the timekeeper of the whole school because there was something exceptional about my life js2 every day pastor quarter to five somebody wakes me quarter to five without failing somebody will wake me i rang the bell five o'clock on the dot i want you to know that this the quality of christians that men of God are marketing and advertising will not stand the test of time. They lack the impetus to endure. Hallelujah. And after that encounter, I began to pursue God. I, I had no business with ministry. In fact, let me tell you something, Pastor. The first crusade that we had, there was no name of ministry. We had to come together. And Jimmy told me what will be the name of this ministry now. I said, I don't know. God didn't give me any name. Let's find something. I can't even remember the name we used. Trinity something. One kind of name like that. Just to be able to explain to PFN we are coming for a crusade. And now I see a lot of people all around. Moving with bodyguards and moving with people. Claiming that they are doing ministry. And they mentored the life of very wrong men of God. Who are out of the program of God. Don't use cars and suits and English and crowd to gauge that a man is close to the presence of God. You will be greatly deceived. 
motivational speakers pack stadiums are they anointed but they pack stadiums with people paying thousands of dollars to hear them speak it doesn't take too much to gather people hallelujah is someone hearing me tonight and i began this encounter let me tell you something i would pray for days i wasn't looking for ministry show me your face show me your glory oh god that's all i want a time came it was it was a matter of life and death i remember i would go to life way life way and then i had i had do you know i will be in the restaurant in community market immediately i finish eating there's one anywhere i hear them playing a tape there were christian bookstores around i'll just go and sit down there i knew almost all of them i was hungry i spent my money on books books on purpose i'll never forget writing an article about myself if i were dead that's what i wrote that was the article i wrote how people may come for my funeral come for this and that and that i did crazy things hallelujah at the back of Ixaramat. You know that bush there they started developing it now it was at the back of isaramat that's where i would go and shout like a madman in the night saying lord will you reveal yourself or kill me don't criticize a man till you know the passion and the story behind the glory god never gave me any assurance that i'll be standing and listening to people but he gave me one assurance he said early will i seek you I will show you some scriptures tonight hallelujah i'll never forget dramatic encounters i was staying in Danfodio, and i remember what used to happen people will come to my room when they come to it was myself steve strings and andy ambassador who were roommates room 155 old block people used to come in the morning in the morning i was a strange person i could be lying down and the next thing the moment i see an angel steve strings or somebody the moment he may just be playing the guitar and something happens the power of god is breaking out people outside the room are falling under the anointing it was a strange life i would climb on top of vet medicine there was one empty place at the very top in the night when people are sleeping i would sit there i had a chair and i would sit there and cry in the night and say will you not reveal yourself to me oh god hmm. holy spirit i wait on you holy spirit i wait on you hallelujah when i was staying in area bz i used to seek the lord i was staying alone well with a roommate but mostly alone and this is where the encounters of my life took another dimension i was broke sometimes i would not have money but there was a guava tree in front of the house i will go and plug the guava there and eat it and take water and say lord i give you praise and i would lock up myself praying and then at a point listen to me certain things started happening in my life i would be praying i didn't even know it was called the cloud of his presence i stand before god and i tell you the truth i lie not a literal mist you know how vapor is that's how it will enter the room and i was being careful so that i wouldn't dabble into any demonic thing i had to search the scripture and i saw when the cloud of god's glory entered the temple and the priest could not even minister again it's in your bible hallelujah i'll never forget praying for somebody who had chicken pox god is my witness it was in less than three hours or so the person came back and almost 90 percent of what he had had disappeared 
and there was nobody to clap for me i didn't even know it was a spectacular miracle you know the problem with a lot of people there are too many people to clap for you when you have not done anything so it makes us believe we gather around a lot of people who are not passionate about god i was seeking the face of god with all my heart then there used to be lots of fellowships on campus to do a lot of things i would just go behind sunday school building and sit down there and i used the worship that was being played by several campus fellowships for my spiritual look let me tell you something this is the reason why you may talk about somebody and god will judge you at once because he has a track record of sacrifice there is there is it's like blood on the altar that speaks hallelujah when reinhard bonke was coming for crusade i remember that time i went i've shared with you the story six hours i was standing no seat a pregnant woman was standing close to me small time the woman will lean on me i said madam i understand you are pregnant but this 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 whole thing i'm we're all tired here but i was determined my life is a testimony of dramatic encounters i started having all of these encounters and i'll never forget listen one night the longing of my soul was satisfied when jesus christ appeared to me i have seen him it's not because i read it in scripture this is why i can tell you with authority that many people who claim they have seen jesus did not see jesus there is nothing that left there was no deposit in their life if you see jesus even if it's for one minute something will enter your life that you will run with for a lifetime this is the jesus i saw when saul on his way to damascus met this jesus what happened to him a hardened criminal at once he broke down he called him lord saul was fasting for three days and three nights he was blind the presence of god made a man blind physically and there are people who claim they see jesus every day fornicating around seeing jesus stealing around seeing jesus doing all kinds of things they say they are seeing jesus that's not the jesus i saw that's not the jesus i saw for when you see him when zechariah saw just an angel an angel he made zechariah dumb an angel hallelujah when i saw jesus i was flat on the ground goodness i'm telling you i looked like a speck of dust in this majestic i could not believe that this was the man preachers were trying to represent when you meet jesus it will change your life it will overhaul your priority about ministry it will no longer be an issue of denomination or an issue of sect an issue of i was this i was that when you meet jesus it will rattle your your whole theology to its foundation i felt as if i was a dead man i could not even see his face let me tell you the truth it was the brightness the i i i don't know how to begin to explain it to you and he stood there his robe was white it was not like physical clothes that you can see like this it was like clothes but it was like the clothes was attached to the person's body so it's not like something you remove and put back it's not our concept of clothes no hallelujah and light brothers and sisters light was emanating from him the christ and all he did to me was to stretch his hands towards me and he stretched that giant hand imagine like stretching an, an aircraft over a fly that was how it was and light light that i cannot explain that light came upon me i don't know how god did it that he did not kill me 
when I got up from that vision there was a fire in my bones that I will live and die for I've been captured by your love I can't explain now you have me and I'm forever changed I've abandoned everything I've ever known and I surrender this life is not my own I belong to you I belong to you I belong to you I belong to you nobody coerced me I surrendered my heart this one is different from coming to do this funny born again thing that people do in church people just march and come out lord jesus lord jesus and he's pinching his neighbor i surrender all i surrender all immediately he finishes the the boyfriend or whoever is waiting for the person and then they ask him are you born again and the brother or the sister they mean to say have you ever come out they say yes now i've even been baptized come on now let me tell you there are many people who think they are saved and god does not know them i know some of you will be angry for this statement i'm making christianity with no transformation impossible except it's not the, the christ that died for our sins hallelujah this was the vision that opened me up into ministry i had been seeing a lot of encounters listen somebody was pursuing me and i went and i stood somewhere in a room all of a sudden i was moved to look through the window when i looked through that window i saw an endless sea of people it was it was as far as my eyes could see and they were talking they were lamenting it was a crowd of people hallelujah after seasons of trainings and building and their sound started zooming to my ears and then eventually it looked like they zoomed those who were in front and i had them it was a it was a sound of languishing and pain it was not a sound of celebration the people were crying and languishing in pain and this was what they said they looked at me and they said there's no food and no water all of a sudden in the vision it became like i had the keys to the storehouse of that entire crowd of people i was holding the keys and i told them i asked them i said who is the cause why you do not have food and water and they said you are the one and i said oh my god i was moved with compassion i started crying and i told them i'm coming right away to help you but there were people who had chased me and i was afraid of them but i took the step to open the door when i opened the door there was a gigantic man waiting for me and he was in the similitude of the holy spirit he now held my hands and he said let's walk together i will walk with you in this journey are you getting the point then he began to walk with me we were to jump from building to building just like structures like you have the students hostel at the top from one end to the other and he jumped to the other side and he sat down there was a small ladder that connected the buildings and I was trying to walk slowly and he was looking at me and laughing and that was how I woke up all of a sudden my life changed I would be in a meeting and would hold hands together just to share the grace quietly seated here and people in rows who fall under the anointing and I could not understand I would stay in the secret place praying and building people would come to look for me the way they will know I'm around is that a great distance before they arrive people will not be able to cross that circumference what is your experience like you who has already called yourself pastor what is your experience what message do you have to give your generation that's why we do a lot of copying and pasting 
a lot of copy and, and all kinds of things we preach messages without power without transformation because they do not come from a depth of truth you're beautiful you're beautiful every time you see me worship him every time you see me do the things that i do let me tell you something whenever there is any seed of pride in me it doesn't take a long time for god to copy it. there are too many encounters in my life all it takes is for god to refresh any of them any of them breaks me down many of you do not have encounters that's why a man of god will keep moving he's falling but he cannot see there's no encounter to remind him of where he was coming from and you can begin to sleep around with members of the church enjoy prosperity when jeeps start coming and cars start coming whether you pray or not you preach well let me tell you the truth the army that god is raising is an army that understand the one they are representing they know him they've had an encounter with him that's the only condition to be able to die for him it's impossible to die for a man you do not know it's impossible to die for a man you cannot you cannot relate with angels bow before him is beautiful There have been so many encounters in my life one time i was in a vision and there was it was outside all the doors were closed all the shops were closed it was like a community and i saw people sitting down sick people all around and i was looking at them and i said where are the doctors where is the hospital these people are dying what is all this i was shouting speaking to the air the people were so weak and helpless they could not even talk to me and then i had a voice that spoke to me from heaven he said go and heal them go and deliver them hallelujah one time when i was praying i was worshiping for a season i began to sense an unusual activity of the presence of god in my life i would worship and pray and build myself listen i want to give you a very big key to my life and that night it was a very deep encounter with god hallelujah and while i was in that place of encounter listen the lord spoke to me and he said from today i give you my presence as a gift this is what God told me hallelujah from that day God opened my eyes and I saw a huge angel I had never seen him and I said Lord what is the name of this angel and the Lord told me his name is called the angel of the Lord's presence he said this is the angel that will walk with you the angel of the Lord's presence hallelujah this is the reason behind some of these mighty manifestations that you see that a lot of people do not understand i have suffered for this anointing i've been criticized for this anointing people have called me all kinds of names my mother is alive she came here you have seen her my father is alive i grew up in the midst of people i didn't come out from a wilderness my life has been an open book from birth to death The Bible says, Oh Lord my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. It says, To see your power and your glory. This is the passion that is the missing ingredient. Every time I go for meetings, after the meetings, you see lots of people coming to kneel down. Oh man of God, lay hands. Because we have emphasized impartations above encounters. So people believe you can take a man's spiritual journey with one laying on of hands. Do you know that all the people that the apostles laid hands on, 
and the patriarchs of old they had they they went through the wilderness together they saw certain things together the laying on of hands did not rob them of true spiritual experience hallelujah i remember my first encounter with a demon real physical demon listen let me share with you i'm sharing with you i'll put a few scriptures and we'll pray because tonight tonight god is going to give some people real encounters hallelujah it was in chapel one night i finished praying listen true story god is my witness none of these things i'm telling you are stage managed and the generator then they just made that generator there and i was just going to turn to the edge of it listen i saw a real physical demon i saw it with my eyes and he just shouted and told me get back that was what he told me before he finished saying get back i was already praying in tongues it was not premeditated and it just went vanished like that from that time authority came upon my life to cast out every kind of demon and devil anywhere brothers and sisters the ancient knew the value of encounters this is what we do not know especially preachers in our generation everybody just believes i have an occupation okay you studied mass communication or french and you don't know what else to do with your life you just say i sense the, the call of god upon my life now after nyse what will i do say, oh, yeah, try ministry now i say talk you were a very good bible study teacher you say truly i was they even gave me price you just go and dapple into the vineyard believing that you are going to be effective you think so go and ask the devil how herbalists are trained go and ask the devil how false prophets are trained go and ask the devil how witches and wizards are trained you think it's an ambition it's a fraternity it's a sacrifice with their life they sell their soul to satan those ones have collected the mark of the beast already hallelujah that's why you can stand and tell the sick be healed and nothing happens there is no experience demons are not idiots they have followed the track record listen something happened there was somebody when we started koinonia he was coming he was in the occult i'm sure one i can't remember his name now one young guy he was in the occult they used to come and sit when people started sitting outside quietly they had seen me this gentleman was sent it's just that we don't we don't share one tenth of the testimonies that happened it will amaze you do you know what this guy told me i went on a retreat i remember one time i went on a retreat the lord asked me to go on a retreat 72 hours my eyes did not see light whether it was day or night I didn't even know what time it was at all whether it was three o'clock i kept everything 72 hours dry i'm not talking about this kind of fast that you take granite in the afternoon later in the evening you are you can't even wait quarter to six you're already peeling the orange the the type your heart panting after god not looking for power hallelujah Do you know after i prayed and i finished that experience the day they brought the gentleman to me and i was about to pray this is not an issue of being oppressed that you are casting out the devil this is somebody that is in occult aware he knows you know what he told me he said sir we have been watching you and he said while you were praying he mentioned the place he said for 72 hours in the realm of the spirit their eyes were open and they were watching hallelujah and he was telling me how that they strike a lot of men of god it's like a spiritual meter that's why a man can be backsliding and nothing is happening it's the deceit of the devil to make you feel things are moving all right your prayer life has died nothing wrong is happening you are not even studying nothing else is it's like a meter it will keep going down 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 you will not observe it it will just keep going down one day 
the devil will hit you once this is the reason why you will see a great man people don't just fall like that brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying samson slept with a harlot true or false without prayer he went and removed the gate of the city that god is showing you mercy over your life does not mean he's endorsing your state he's challenging you to rise higher this is the message you will not find in church everybody tells people things are all right jesus has died wonderful you are now born again do everything just book in the name of jesus give him all the praise shout do everything you want to do and there's all kinds of madness and hell is raging war believers are not sensitive hallelujah one of the greatest assets i have in my life is not revelation it's not understanding it's my love for god and it's like a cancer and i trust god to infect you with it tonight a love for god that nothing can take not power not anointing not influence people call me all kinds of names i don't care what you call me apostle daddy mommy uncle call whatever you want to call me that's that's your i thank god for the honor but there is something that i've seen that nothing in time can take it away hallelujah let me show you two scriptures i saw this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life forever john 14 21 mighty god john 14 21 let's read one to read please can we have it from amplified do you have amplified let's have it from amplified The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And what's his reward for loving me? It says, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. Are you seeing it now? I want to show you the protocol of our encounter. And I too will love him and will show reveal manifest myself to him i will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him is that in your bible there is a protocol god does not just reveal himself to people because they are crying or because they are praying many people want to encounter god everybody cry even in churches we hold all kinds of three days one week revival you see the poster revival exclamation mark revival two exclamation mark and then another revival three exclamation mark revival 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 and you see the people who are coming for the revival strolling around and coming to sit and the man of god who is now supposed to bring the revival who needs revival himself will now come with his his, his prepared manual and talk all kinds of stories and people just nod they say mm, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and they now say it's time to pray and everybody just finds a little corner and is just sleeping and snoring at the end of the program they say they've held this year's revival you know what a revival is a revival is an awakening that keeps a city and the community stand still we don't read a lot of history we don't read a lot of where we are coming from the Welsh revival was so powerful that men will carry the newspaper as soon as they start reading the newspaper revival will start in their house what is our concept of revival the average young person in this generation cannot define what a revival is we have not seen it What is our concept of Christianity? What do we really want to achieve? Ask the average believer, why do you go to church? It tells you to go and worship. What is that? It's just because we grew up knowing 
that you are a Christian and it's good for you to go to church. Second Corinthians or First Corinthians. Lord, we bless you. The Lord is redefining someone's Christianity tonight. Removing the things that are unnecessary. Verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for who? Them that love Him, not them that pray to Him, not them that want to serve Him, them that love God. Let me tell you, this is the missing ingredient in the body of Christ. It's not Rema. We have enough revelation. There are powerful men and women of God. I attest to it in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world. There are people who have explored the portals of revelation back to back. What we lack is love. And when I say love, I don't just mean love by giving. I mean passion and priority. God has very little priority in our generation. Let me tell you the truth. Very little priority. Very little. There are few parents. The average parent in Nigeria, they believe in God, but God is not a priority. Hallelujah. Ask the average young man what his pursuit is. Either to go to school or to go and serve or to get a wife or to get some kinds of things. Imagine imagine this is the whole circumference of our christian pursuit ask a man of god what are you seeking he tells you by the grace of god we should grow to ten thousand and fifteen thousand and then have our own auditorium have our own buses start making our own calendar then go on air is this our circumference of the pursuit of god I love him with my life he's my priority i'm obsessed about him and that has nothing to do with ministry it's my default state when i sing he knows i'm not pretending it i love him more than miracles let him take all the anointing from my life let him take the mean if god asks me pastor and tells me close koinonia close up here and i pack up everything i promise you to god who has created me this would be the last service that's the end of it everybody will feel bad everybody will complain and say why some serious people even say let's let's resurrect it you can go ahead and face god alone but i'll be so happy and i'll tell him lord what next if god tells me go and join a church or a ministry and be an usher i will do that gladly from the depths of my heart I, not minding anybody's recognition i don't want no recognition from anybody when you see god commit spiritual power to a man ask questions ask questions god is not stupid that's why a lot of people come oh god give me power i want to speak somebody sent me a text he said i cannot imagine how you speak and people fall i want it to i said go and ask god the guy felt disappointed go and ask god i'm not a herbalist i don't manufacture miracles in little dots of 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 oil and, and communion and all of that no we want to jump the process of genuine encounter and intimacy yet we want power that's why I question a lot of what we call power in the body of Christ. A man who has so much power without encounter is questionable. But right now, everybody is chasing power, power. Prophetic power, apostolic power, miraculous power. People keep hopping around. I've given warning. Nobody should come and stand in front of my house waiting for any impartation. I'm not a herbalist. 
you can call for counseling you can call for koinania god will bless you listen i believe in the laying on of hands we lay hands and we do impartation for all the people but we must lead you into a of desperation and encounter with the spirit say amen two more scriptures let me tell you how you know that God is not a priority if you attempt to live without him it's a sign that you do not need him in your life whatever you can live without is not a priority to you are you getting my point whatever you can live without is not a priority Air is a priority, you cannot live without it. Food is a priority, you cannot live without it. If you can live without God, don't tell me He's a priority to you. There are many of us outside, inside, you are looking at me right now. You know between you and God that God is not a priority in your life. You may even be in ministry, you may be doing very well. But is God a I'm not asking you whether you are born again or not. I know you are born again. I'm talking of a priority. That if you are to delete many things in your life, God will still remain. Hallelujah. There is a law in the spirit. Jeremiah 29. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. 11 to 13. We'll read it quickly. Because I want us to pray. The Lord wants to plant a fire in our hearts tonight and reorder our spiritual pursuit aright. That beyond revelation, we will love Him. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. We know this scripture so well. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Next verse. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you here's the condition verse 13 this is a law in the spirit never forget it for as long as you live read it everybody want to read and find me when ye search for me with all your heart this is the law for finding god in the spirit you will never never have an encounter with god until your all seeks him if you just seek him with part of you if you seek him with an ulterior motive you will, if you seek him because of business or marriage or money like many of us are seeking God God will give you the car God will give you the marriage God will give you all of these things we seek different things that God has we seek his hands we seek all kinds of things here is the law write it if anybody ever ask you what is the protocol for an encounter this is it you will seek me look at me let me tell you what it means to seek god to seek god is not to pray this is what a lot of people have been taught as seeking god prayer is not necessarily seeking god to seek god is not even worship because that's what many of us still believe to seek God is not to fast. To seek God is to cultivate a desire that seeks to make Him the priority of your life at any cost. That has nothing to do with prayer. It is when that happens, prayer can be a machinery to help you get there. Fasting can be a machinery to help you get there. Worship can be a machinery to get there to help you get there but in themselves they cannot give you i know someone and he's i think he's one of the greatest person i've met in my life people talk about kings of fasting and people who fast i know somebody who fasted he rounded up last year 400 days 400 days very quiet brother nobody even knows him around 400 days i had the privilege of rounding up his fast with him and i prayed for him and laid my hands when he finished the 400 days six to six for 400 days in my life even in history 
I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just telling you that there are people like that. Yet you will still see that there are certain dimensions that he has not entered. So it's not just about fasting. People brag with fasting. They, they intimidate others with fasting. They make it look, how many days have you fasted? One will say three. Dry your wet. Say dry. Another person said all kinds of things. If fasting alone brought people into the place of power, some people would have brought the throne of God to the earth and be sitting on it by now. Let me tell you, fasting will not in its own just make God reveal himself to you. The psalmist said, as the deer pants after the water pools. Bishop Oedeko said something. He said, if you want to know the secret of the hand of God in my life, you must know my heartbeat for God. I know a lot of preachers who do not have the heartbeat for God. I go for meetings and I talk with preachers. After a powerful service, they look at me and they admire deeply the things that God has done in my life. And when they come and sit down, 90% of them don't ask questions. They are just looking for an envelope. And they put offering and sign checks. Where is my PA? Bring check. And you you sign it you you really think it will give you an encounter i believe in giving and all of that we've taught this there and they just drop it and they say pray for me when you meet a man of the spirit ask questions don't just kneel down and say lay hands on me what was the secret of this glory i know lots of preachers that teach well but three days after they are teaching people have forgotten everything they have said but I know certain people, Reinhard Bonke is one of them. You meet him once, your life will never be the same. I remember when he came for a crusade, I think in Makodi. Dr. Paul Enenche said something. He said after the crusade, they should book the room and leave it 24 hours. The room that Paul Enenche slept in. Hallelujah. And when Paul, uh, when, 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 um, uh, what's his name now? The evangelist. Reinhard Bonke. When he left, and said they, should, they shouldn't repair it. He said all the people, they should not come and make it. They should leave it as dirty as it is. And he came there and laid down on that exact spot and said, Lord, just give me the hunger that you gave this man. I'm not asking for power. Just give me his hunger. That's how to pray. That's how to receive that's how to encounter power you are looking for the wrong things the hand of a man the wallet of a man all kinds of things look for the heart for God that that man has and you've gotten the secret of his anointing this one you cannot receive it as an impartation you must desire and covet and pursue the Bible says there are many things that God has in store hallelujah something happened i think a week or, or two or, i think a week ago i was sharing with the students school of ministry hallelujah i wanted to listen to a message and i searched for it searched for it on on youtube i couldn't find it and i said lord would you help me and i slept it didn't take long when i slept i was in a dream and i went back to my laptop i listen to me true story and someone came and found the message for me and they played the message for me in the dream beginning to end so i woke up listening i had listened to the message and i remembered everything there are some things you see god do for a man and you'll be like god you are not fair god says it's not that i'm not fair this guy has attracted me with so much passion it's, it's a love affair that's why many people stop at the outer court. They cannot eat the hallowed bread. But there are some people, what somebody is fasting for for 10 days, God will carry it as a gift and give a man who truly loves him. There are sisters cat walking all around hoping that one brother will get to see them. Whereas another gentle sister is just saying, Lord, come, let me use you. Lord, I love you. And I seek you with all my heart. And in that seeking, God will just wake a brother who is sleeping in the night. 
and you just wake up shut out that god will say keep quiet this is not what we are talking about you see that lady she's your wife say lord please this is not the time god will say have you submitted to me or not say fire on. let me tell you the cheapest route to the hand of god is force his heart to come to your direction hallelujah that's the greatest church growth principle i know you can give people balloon and exercise book after service you can give them eclairs you can put all kinds of things put screens all around transport them to their houses if your heart does not pant after god let me tell you there are certain dimensions it's not demons god himself will stop you from entering hallelujah you will seek me and you will find me i listened to a very powerful um 26 minutes video about passion and hunger for god and one 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 asian was talking to the people it inspired me and blessed me so much and he gave an analogy he said if you if you lose a I think is it a 10 or 50 cents if it falls in the night a coin maybe 10 or 50 cents and it falls in the night will you look for it if you check it around and you don't find it a coin that is so cheap pastor will you spend all the night looking for it but if you have a check of hundred thousand dollars that they gave you not you and your friend and it disappears even if it's the realm of the spirit you will use light and bring it back into this realm so tell me is god a cheap coin for you that you search if you don't find him no problem any other thing man some of us can begin to see god until a man comes into your life or until a woman comes or until you make five points or until you get that job you hear people say i'm busy i'm busy you are not busy when your leg breaks and they hang it for three months in shika no going anywhere you sit down there you are not too busy but the one who can protect and preserve you it's amazing how people claim they are too busy for god say i'm too busy i have an appointment go is it not when god takes you there safely i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you lord i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting this was the secret of david Look at a man called David. See all the bad, bad things that David did. And it was as if God didn't see it. Go and study the life of David. And see how many criminal offenses David committed in his lifetime. Every bad thing you can imagine. Stealing somebody's wife. Kill the husband. Huh? Slept with Bathsheba and when the first child died he didn't repent he still had Solomon with her again ate the temple shoe bread did all kinds of things yet hear the testimony God said he is a man after my heart that's why the guy accessed some realms he saw things that were not given for his dispensation to see it was david who sat down and his love for god he said how can i be in a palace like this and there is no house for my god although you do not need tents to dwell in but i will build you a house god said no you you're already a criminal you won't build me a house he said no problem god i love you i'm not offended i will put the money for my son and god said what kind of man is this there is a way you love god that god you you try to force god to be guilty if he does not bless you just love him don't ask him anything it's in his word he says any man that cannot cater for his family you make yourself the child then you come and make yourself like the wife of this one come on now 
you have placed God in a tight position that he must respond he called the nation of Israel the apple of his eyes try to touch the apple of a man's eyes and you will see how his hand will reach to you and slap you and the Bible says the right hand of God is power that's where Habalis got it that you, you can go to a burial ground have you heard those kind of stories a hand will appear from nowhere and slap you and the guy will become deaf so what about the right hand of God that is power when God stretches that hand Acts chapter 4 they said that you will stretch forth your hands when God stretches his hands it will clear the way the breath of his nostrils parted the Red Sea is it that God cannot save us listen I want to give us a food for thought and we will pray the way many of us treat God we are not sure whether God can come to our rescue or not what is a husband what is money what is a car brothers and sisters what is a house what is HIV that God cannot take it away what is ministry what is ministry that God cannot give you increase Jesus entered a city and it was noised abroad what is a child that God cannot give you what are demons that God cannot keep them far from your life is the cause of on your life so great that God cannot help you are not the first to go through affliction ah I'm looking for money to marry it's just two months for my marriage keep quiet seven days God created the heavens and the earth how long does it take to give you money are you the first to get married or is your wife did she descend from heaven what is the special arrangement my child's school fees really you've not heard of people that God will stop from sleeping in the night to respond to those who truly love him I cannot tell you how many times people will send me texts in the middle of the night and say the Lord woke me and said I must send you a seed I must send you recharge card and I said Lord what are you doing to me I found a secret when you love him don't just seek to serve him yet emoji don't just seek to serve him yet seek to love him back up the name of your ministry whether it's, it's revival Tawa incorporated I'm not saying God didn't call you just keep it aside win the heart of God and you will ride on the wings of a dimension of his grace that you cannot experience or that you have never experienced before is someone getting blessed tonight this is a missing ingredient and so the apostle says it this way may the grace of our lord jesus christ we recite it after every meeting the love of god the koinonia the participation of the spirit let it remain with you i love god with my life this is the biggest secret i'm not the most gifted minister i'm not the most anointed minister i'm not the most eloquent minister I'm not the most intelligent minister I'm not the most experienced minister but one thing I can tell you ask God I love him oh I love him with my life and I love him with my heart I love him more than power I love him more than everything I love him more than all of this uh, this swan water and this bottle together with this Soviet inside I love him more than this chair I love him more than anything marriage children wife husband mother father if you stand my way with god you already know you have lost that's the end of it do you love god that much god is asking you this question for when you do you will see power in your life you don't need to talk too much we just returned from university of ibadan and goodness what the lord did in that campus humbled me I've seen the hand of God and I see the hand of God week in, week out. But to see the humbling thing that, that, that it was so humbling. The wife of the commissioner of police of the state had to follow us to our hotel and stay there. 
and we were talking with this woman till about 12 in the night she wouldn't go i had to be prophesying and praying for her and she gave her ipad for someone to record it she said my husband needs to see this this is the favor somebody has been sweating about sitting from morning till night in an office i want to see the commissioner of police they say see god he said no 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 i i know how we will do this thing because you think god wants your money i surrender all to you everything i give to you withholding nothing this will be our song this night withholding nothing tonight you will release that isaac withholding nothing withholding nothing sing i surrender all i surrender all to you everything i give to you holding nothing but holding nothing I was talking with one of my friends one time and he said he calls me emoji he said emoji you are enjoying you no know? i'm seeing your picture on facebook all the time ministry is sweet oh you are just changing clothes and i was looking at the person i said look at somebody i've not seen after one year look at what is in his mind you see that that's what is in his mind to him he's enjoying crowds money he said you are rich oh you hear that boss is carrying people and I, i'm in my mind i'm thinking what is what is wrong with this brother because to him he now thinks one kind of magic happened do you know that you came into this ministry because god brought you it was a law that compelled you to come there was no guarantee that you would come but there was a guarantee that if i seek him i will find him and when you find him he will find everything he has his power his wisdom his grace this is the secret rise up on your feet we are going to pray hallelujah david Dam, come you're going to sing that song again we are going to sing and we are going to pray listen for many of you two prayer points just two prayer points tonight the first is the prayer of release you're going to be crying and say lord I love you but truly you are not yet a priority there are i i don't know if i have that passion tonight forget about titles i don't want to know who you are in this place just cry to god and the second prayer is going to be a prayer for an encounter an encounter an encounter go ahead Nothing. nothing sing from your heart lord i'm withholding nothing if you want the marriage take it if you want the relationship take it if you want my degree take it if you want my life take it if you want my ministry my anointing my money i sacrifice it my bank account my anointing take it over I surrender Sing it from your heart Everything I give to you With holding nothing Holding nothing With holding nothing Holding nothing Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Abraham, take thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. You are going to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, where is that Isaac in my life? That thing I cannot release and let go. Who is that Isaac? Where is that Isaac? 
what is that thing I cannot give you lift your voice and pray and say Lord it belongs to you it belongs to you some of you may cry as you are laying it down but let it go tonight let the intellect go tonight surrender it to him I declare that you are above that job. You are above that job. You are above that challenge. There is nothing my God cannot give you. Give him your heart tonight. Give him your heart tonight. Some of you need to rededicate your lives afresh. Outside. All the overflows. Some of us need to rededicate our lives. And say Lord I'm coming back home tonight. I've strayed from you. But I'm coming back home tonight. Holding nothing Hallelujah There are some of us His business that took the place of God in our lives You want to make money Anyhow You must make money Others His ministry You are now too busy for God Too busy for the things of God He's no longer a priority Others academics others job before you got the job before you got the admission god was a priority right now we're so busy for him for others before you got married when you were praying and fasting and dropping offerings everywhere now the husband has come now the wife has come for many of us is your health when you were trusting god dying of HIV dying of cancer dying of a terminal disease you sought God but now that it has gone there's no time for him again we're holding nothing holding nothing hallelujah still praying number, uh, prayer point number one you're going to pray you're going to say Lord even if you never bless me again in this life you already have my heart the issue of backsliding or complaining will never occur in my life again even if the breakthrough does not come come on lift your voice that was the secret of shadrach meshach and abednego they said oh king we know that our god will deliver us but even if he does not deliver us we will not bow Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I know you will bless me, but I love you more than the blessing. I love you more than my bank account. I love you more than my desire to be famous. Pray. Everything I give to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Hallelujah Look at me Job was at a point in his life Where he was such a wealthy and a blessed man The Bible says Job testifying about himself He said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle he said i walked upon butter and i sucked honey out of the rock he said the young men saw me and they bowed their faces the old men saw me and they stood up that was the position of job 
and one day the devil went to the lord and said is it for nothing that this man serves you in other words his heart is not with you and god said you can touch everything don't touch his life let me watch and in one day his children went his cattle went everything went and job sores came out of him dogs will come and lick his sores and his wife the first lady of a community became an object of embarrassment all the friends left him and the wife told job he said do you still hold your integrity do you still hold your love do you love god that much to be a fool you have become a talk of the town people have mocked you job you were a great man do you not remember when you dined with kings and job looked at her and said why do you speak like one of these stupid women he said though he slay me yet will i praise him the bible says in all of this job sin not it was not out of his mouth that he uttered anything bad he said i know my redeemer liveth and the bible says job was in a predicament but he stopped focusing on himself and he was praying for his friends when job prayed for his friends the only other person that did that was jesus and stephen on the cross he prayed for the people stephen and the bible says god turned the captivity of job and he had double of everything children cattle what are you going through that is challenging your christian integrity let me preach to somebody for two minutes what are you going through financial challenge your academics you may be on probation right now you may even be withdrawn let me tell you all hope is not lost the bible says go weeping and yours for the night you wrote jam seven times and it looks like nothing is coming some of you are due for graduation but you've been kept again and again can i tell you something like job i want you to speak tonight that though he slay me yet will i praise him all your colleagues have gotten married and you're the only one who is not married all other people have gone ahead of you they are even laughing they said they sin and they are still blessed but you who has been righteous for years don't compromise your deliverer is coming i assure you god will ride upon the horse and come speedily to deliver you with holy nothing you may be married and it looks like your marriage is not working you're just smiling around but things are not working let me tell you your deliverer is coming some of you your homes are it's a place of living hell all kinds of war happened there father mother everybody some of you you are the only ones who are saved in your family and it's bringing a lot of challenge let me prophesy to you that if your heart is connected to god there is nothing my god will not give you the lord told me something years ago he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there is nothing i will not give you i have received things from god i cannot remember when i prayed for hallelujah the last prayer point and we'll round up tonight listen you're going to pray hallelujah and you're going to say lord give me an encounter that is bigger than the challenge i'm going through right now give me an encounter that is bigger than the success i've experienced so that whether my challenges or my successes they will not stand your place lift your voice and pray give me an encounter give me an encounter oh god lift your voice and pray give me an encounter open my eyes to see jesus open my eyes to see something bigger than my challenges open my eyes to see something bigger than ministry something bigger than titles Give me an encounter, 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 give
give me an encounter that will create the impetus for my spiritual life. No backsliding, no going back. Pray, I cry for an encounter. Open my eyes, oh God. Give me the vision of the night. Let me see Jesus seated on the throne. Let me hear his voice. Let me feel his embrace. Yeah, you have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Yeah, you have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek me with all your heart. Listen, hallelujah. Listen, we are still in a prayer mode. The altar call tonight is very special. We are still going to pray. Don't stop praying. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, listen, or you know that you've backslidden, as we pray, I'd like you to run from wherever you are, inside or outside. Just come and be on your knees and be praying. There are people God is calling back. You know where you used to be. Don't be ashamed. You've never given your heart to the Lord, inside or outside. As we pray right now, please leave your seat. Come out here quickly. Come out here quickly. Lift your voice and let's pray. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Quickly, quickly. Say, protest, shut Don't wait for anybody to call you. Come by yourself. Come and cry before your maker. Cry before your maker. Cry before your maker. Say, Lord, I'm returning home tonight. Cry before your maker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You need Jesus tonight. Don't be ashamed. I want you to cry to the Lord give your life to Jesus by yourself don't pretend it you are not reciting any poem this night cry out to God from the depths of your heart and say Lord I'm sorry I return home tonight let me tell you your friends can let you down your association can let you down why don't you give your heart to the one who will never let you down? Don't be ashamed of your tears. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of us did not even re realize when we left God. You didn't even realize when you stopped pursuing Him. 
it's not like you were backsliding you didn't realize when success started taking god out of your life when failure started taking god out of your life those of you in front cry i know there are some of you inside and outside that should be here whether you are here or not cry to god where you are and say lord i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business with you beyond ministry i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business with you i mean business he is supposed to come out and he did not come out he is supposed to come out i mean business with you Lord we love you Lord we love you we love you we love you we love you from the depths of my heart let everything else go let I don't care what it is let everything else go for the excellency of you I won't trade you for silver or gold not for fame not for anything those of you in front keep talking to your maker he's listening to you your encounter tonight will be genuine you will know you found God you will never forget this day for the rest of your life hallelujah our time is fast spent but we're going to pray one prayer that the Lord is putting in my heart listen listen the Bible says love not the world nor the things that are in the world it said for he that loves let's let's look at that scripture can we look at it please we have to look at it first John 2 verse 14 to 17 first John 2 love not the world the word love there is the word eros lost a craving this is what god is going to cut out of some of us there are some of us that love god but we love money you can kill because of it there are some of us you love men ladies you love men more than your life you can go with any man you love god but let a man just come into your life there are some of us women you love women you you can you can do anything for women and a lot of pastors have said it doesn't matter let me tell you if you want the glory it matters i have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning i have written to you young men because ye are strong and the word of god abided in you and ye have overcome the wicked one 15 whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwelleth in him and he in god 16 john first john 2 not 4 2 sorry i was wondering first john 2 not first john 4 he said for all okay let's go back to verse 14 First John 2 verse 14 I have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one 15 love not the world this is this is the John admonishing us love not the world it's not saying you should not be rich we just finished a series on financial dominion it's not saying you should not get married but don't be attached that eros that craving that attachment no love not the world neither the things that are in the world that means there are things that are in this world but he said neither the things that are in the world hear me 
it says if any man has this attachment and this craving for the world the love of the father is not in him as simple as that next verse for all that is in the world what are the things in the world it categorizes them into three number one is the loss of the flesh is this amplified please give me amplified same 16 amplified for all that is in the world listen the lust of the flesh craving for sensual gratification that is the isaac that some of us need to drop tonight the lust of the flesh number two the lust of the eyes greedy longings of the mind you want the best car in the world you want everything anything your eyes sees you want human or material you will never contact the power of god that way number three and the pride of life this is the realm that some of us are sitting in assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things degrees houses qualifications the bible says these do not come from the father not the materials now but that desire does not proceed from the father but are from the world itself we are going to pray you know which of these three categories belongs to you every one of us in this place has a prayer point for at least one of them every one of us everyone and you're going to pray and say lord tonight i'm not ashamed you know the encumbrances that stop the richness of your spiritual experience your area of vulnerability lift your voice right now and pray pray from the depths of your heart for some of you is the loss of the eyes don't say it does not matter brother it's time for you to take the issue of holiness and purity serious you can't be sleeping around and say it does not matter don't tell me it does not matter who shall ascend to the hill of the lord who shall stand in his holy place there are some of us who are hustlers you want to make it by all means you want to make ends meet it doesn't work like that pray from the depth of your heart is between you and your god tonight outside inside take it seriously say lord i repent tonight take over this loss for money is killing me take over this loss for women is killing me take over this loss for wealth this loss for for popularity and recognition is killing me this love for ministry and title and accolades is killing me take it away let there be a circumcision a cutting away hallelujah early will i seek thee my soul longs for you to see your power and your glory listen listen to me we are rounding up let him that sins sin no more i'm i'm i'm, I'm seriously god is speaking to people in this place those of you who drink an end has come I'm not just speaking there is power to break that chain it's time for you to take God seriously if any guy is coming to your house and doing every kind of nonsense after this meeting send him a text say my brother I love you but I'm ready to move forward I've had a message this night and I'm serious about my destiny some of you after this meeting 
some people need text messages from you are you hearing me after this message some people need your text message this night these are the destiny killers that are eating our life when you want to pursue god they just show up some of us you need to minimize movies the movie industry is that devil that is stopping you from stepping into the things of god the movie industry is not wrong except where it stands in the way of your intimacy with god you must minimize it for there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs there is a price in this journey but there is the beauty and excellency these are the things that when you do no demon manufactured in hell can stand near your life i cast out devils and i sleep like a baby i'm not just sleeping on my bed there is an atmosphere it takes a long protocol to reach me a long protocol in the spirit hallelujah those of you in front i'm going to lead you to pray don't be ashamed this is koinonia there are some of you who are really crying this is the presence of god don't be ashamed i'm going to lead you that you are not here does not mean you cannot join them if the prayer is necessary forget about who came with you no this is between you and god this is a destiny encounter those of you in front i, I see sincerity from your heart and i want to lead you please don't be emotional about this i want this to be a genuine encounter there is no habit in your life the power of god cannot break are you willing to cooperate with god there is nothing that cannot no amount of demon possession or manipulation or whatever it is that can stand your life when you sincerely are ready to move therefore pray after me and say from the depths of your heart whisper it many of you as you pray you will be surprised what will happen to you thank you jesus say after me lord jesus i surrender i truly surrender tonight i repent forgive me my sins i love you with all my heart take away all the things that have taken your place in my life this night i am willing to start with you afresh take me use me anoint me empower me and make me an ambassador in the name of jesus satan stay far from my life from today i receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil i am free i am delivered in the name of jesus christ now look at me you have made the greatest decision in your life and i want you tomorrow we are going to meet with you by five exactly at the chapel the chapel just by the sunday school books and please endeavor to come we are going to meet with you and we'll talk with you by four sorry four on the dot for now i just want you to follow the ushers and they will have your details we are going to follow you up and i promise you we are going to pray for you if you're still under the anointing and you just want to lie there no problem but make sure eventually you meet with them please celebrate them celebrate you. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 